Strategies for Management and Prevention of Asthma Recent Updates The long-term goals associated with asthma management are to achieve good symptom control, minimize future risk of asthma-related mortality and exacerbations, reduce risk of persistent airflow limitation and side effects of treatment, and identify patients' own goals about treating their asthma. Several factors are taken into consideration while making decisions about asthma management. Control-based management is a strategy in which treatment is continuously adjusted based on review of patient's response to symptom control and future risk. For population-level decisions, the best treatment option is selected based on efficacy, effectiveness and safety data from clinical trials and net cost. For individual patients, treatment is selected based on patient characteristics or phenotype that may predict response to treatment along with patient preferences. According to the Global Initiative for Asthma Guidelines, treatment with short-acting beta agonists alone is no longer recommended in adults and adolescents. All adults and adolescents must receive inhaled corticosteroid-containing controller treatment as needed. Treatment with daily low dose of inhaled corticosteroids is highly effective in controlling mild asthma symptoms, reducing risk of exacerbations, hospitalization and death. For adults and adolescents with mild asthma, treatment with low dose inhaled corticosteroids and formoterol lowers risk of severe exacerbations by about two-thirds, when compared to treatment with short-acting beta agonists alone. Step-up treatment must be considered for patients with uncontrolled asthma despite good adherence and inhaler techniques. Steps 1 and 2 include treatment with low-dose inhaled corticosteroids formoterol as required and it reduces risk of severe exacerbations. Preferred step 3 for treatment for adults and adolescents includes low-dose inhaled corticosteroid formoterol as maintenance and reliever therapy. For children 6 to 11 years, medium-dose inhaled corticosteroids with as needed short-acting beta agonists. Step-down treatment is considered in patients with good asthma control maintained for about 3 months. A written asthma action plan should be provided, along with close monitoring, and scheduled follow-up visits. It is recommended to avoid complete withdrawal of inhaled corticosteroids, unless it is temporarily needed to confirm diagnosis. Assessment of contributing factors is necessary in difficult to treat or severe cases of asthma. In these cases, phenotypic assessment and add-on therapies including biologics must be considered. Some add-on treatment options are listed here. All patients with asthma must be provided with inhaler training skills, adherence must be encouraged through controller medications even when symptoms are not frequently occurring. Self-management training must be provided to promote self-monitoring of symptoms and regular medical reviews to reduce risk of exacerbations. Patients with an increased risk of exacerbations must undergo frequent medical reviews than usual, for adjustment of dosages. Additionally, modifiable risk factors must be identified and addressed. Non-pharmacological interventions must be considered for risk reduction and symptom control. Children must not be exposed to tobacco smoke during pregnancy or after birth. Pregnant women must ensure sufficient vitamin D intake to reduce risk of early wheezing. Breastfeeding must be advised to protect against allergies. Broad-spectrum antibiotics must be avoided during first year. Other asthma prevention strategies for all patients are mentioned here.